followed by Schwabenschwanz, this section here, Swallow's Tail, because according to the, the builders of Nürburgring Nordschleife, if you look at the section from the top, it looks like a swallow's tail. I could never understand that, but sure, bro. And then we go, really? Honestly, Polestar with 70 kilometers per hour with the slowest jump ever out of the mini carousel, you pull my seatbelt, yeah, I would definitely have crashed. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring. In case today's video gets published, it's published quite late because it's filmed namely today. And today is April 1st. Can you see it? No, because we have our CPL filter fully on so it's not showing. Oh, there we go. It is April 1st, so April Fools and the weather is actually playing April Fools in us because as you can see it is snowing. We have here this all white stuff uh, and hopefully we'll be able to go out on track and it's even crazy when you take into consideration that two days ago it was 25 degrees and right now it is, can you see it? minus two degrees so hopefully the track will be open today and i will film a video talking you through the corner names what they mean where they are because i realized a i've never done this before that's why we're doing it today in general and two today is supposed to be combined layout so Nordschleife and the GP track combined together, something that only happens a couple of times a year. So it gives us a perfect opportunity to talk about both the GP track and Nordschleife. So let's hop in to the Polestar. The reason why I'm doing this in the Polestar is because it's quite quiet and I'll be talking about the corner names. And second of all, considering today's weather, I made a great decision of not swapping the winter tires yet still for the summers. So the car is perfectly equipped for today's scenario. In any case, let's hop in and go. Hmm. No semi slicks, seriously? That's rookie material. Yeah. Uh, First no, excuse okay. is already yeah. sold. <laughs> Hopefully, good luck that it will be open. You. <laughs> See you. Okay, we're in the car, rolling to the track. It is snowing, but surprisingly enough, the track, as of this second, is still open. The first cars are out on track already, we had the notification that the car track is open so hopefully it will remain that way and hopefully everyone will stay safe because minus 2 degrees and snow, not the best conditions. Now as mentioned, although today is 1st of April, April Fools, this is not an April Fools video except for the actual crazy weather that we have, but however, um, funnily enough, 93 years ago, in 1929, on April 1st, there was also another event that could have been considered April Fools. Namely, an engineer named Kurt Volkhart did a test drive with his ra rocket car. And he has been doing it already like for five years or so back then. And it was like one of his latest rocket cars. He had like 24 rockets strapped to it and people were actually invited to take a look at this crazy, um, yeah, crazy occurrence and uh, he actually lived to like somewhere 50s so he didn't die <laughs> by doing so but yeah it's crazy to think of all right the track is actually open so um yeah as long as we get on the track it will remain open where's my lap ticket so unprepared for this eh, there we go ticket okay um yeah as mentioned i'll be talking you through the the corner names the corner sections track sections i know a lot but a lot or i like to think that i know something about the notch life about the gp track not so much but we'll get to that soon enough so first of all of course we have the Döttinger, the longest straight of any racetrack in the world some people might say no le mans is longest straight Mm, not after the 90s when they put the roundabouts so with the roundabouts it's not straight anymore but this almost two kilometers straight Döttingen heard the high section of Döttingen because Döttingen is a village here and this straight is renamed after Döttingen now here we have the so-called Bilstein bridge it's actually Antonius bridge or Antonius Brücke and this bend here is Antonius uh, Buche, which is the Antonius Beach, beach as a tree, which used to stand here up until 1932, I think, which they had to cut down to put the B258, uh, yeah, that is here, uh, the public road. The compression, Tiergarten compression, is Tiergarten, 
uh, is named after Animal Garden, actually M Animal Cemetery of all the animals that were uh, falling in battles back then. This here is Hohenrein, or a bit further down. Hohenrein is actually the high meadow and this, uh, what's it called, this uh, meadow, so to say here, well, that's what it is. And they put it in 1967, I think, yeah, uh, to again to shorten the street, because even back then the cars were getting a bit too fast. And you can actually see on the right side a bit of, of old tarmac. Here is the entry into T13, um, which is also the, well, the other section, the T13 straight here, but we are going straight today to the GP track. This corner here, this chicane, is actually Hyundai, you can see here, is Hyundai chicane. Now, before making this video, I really had to look things up, because unlike the Nordschleife, when it comes to the GP track, the corners get renamed quite often, depending on the sponsor. Whoever is sponsoring this corner will get its named after him. So previously it was the NGK chicane, and now it's Hyundai chicane for the last, I think, two years maybe. Ahead of us is the big Mercedes grandstand. A lot of people confuse it by calling it Mercedes Arena. It's not the Mercedes Arena. It is actually the Yokohama S. So here we have a very hard braking zone, um, which can really mess up your brakes if you're going from full throttle into the brakes with stock car. But this is the Yokohama S. The actual S is to the left, but it is only used in 24 hour races. Um, but in 19... 95 was it I think uh, they built this place which is the actual Mercedes arena or recently renamed to AMG arena and before that there was actually go-kart track here open outdoor go-kart track nowadays we only have uh, like an electric indoor car, uh, car track pretty cool still but not as cool as internal combustion engine uh, go-karts that could go quite fast so still Mercedes Arena Mercedes Arena yada 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 then we proceed going to the straight and let's see what kind of uh, version we're driving today do we have to turn right here or are we going straight no we are going still straight that's good so we're proceeding here to the uh, left and then afterwards to the right so here on the right is the exit of little monaco which is the connection bit uh when being used only i'm actually completely not driving the lines i'm just uh, so ignore that is being used here when you run the so-called mullenbach schleife configuration the small gp track and ahead of us you might know this corner as the dunlop corner of like the it had a yellow dunlop tower but nowadays it is actually a goodyear hairpin or the goodyear corner so change the sponsor but dunlop and goodyear is basically the same company so it's kind of the same we also see the wrx track ahead of us or the gravel that is being used so looking forward to for them coming back later this year not as late as last year when they were driving actually during snow and which was amazing but yeah then ahead of us is michael schumacher S also says so, so named after Michael Schumacher, world's greatest Formula One champion, driver, Formula One driver. Some people might say Hamilton, but th those same people probably gonna say it's not the car, it's the driver when it comes to Hamilton, who cannot keep up with Haas today. Uh, all right, uh, proceeding to um, I think it was Ravenel corner yeah so Ravenel uh, oh yeah there we go Ravenel corner exactly we have we have some cheats here cheat demon <laughs> cheat stance so yeah Ravenel corner ahead of us is Bilstein corner um, yep so turning in last time I drove the GP truck was during the 24-hour Eco GP um, so yeah need to remember the lines again as you can see I'm not really like excited by the GP track because uh, it's not as exciting as the Nordschleife and B uh, it's also quite hard on the car, so I try to avoid it unless I have to race here. This here is Advan, Advan Corner. I think it's Advan Corner, is it? Yes, it's an Advan Corner, flat out corner with any car, also GT3 cars, etc. etc. Very high speed corner, and then followed by Vedal S. So, this S chicane um, that is yeah, used is there to slow you down. Oh, it's even minus three degrees outside currently. Yeah. We can take the full curb. <laughs> Too much of a curb. Fatal S. Okay, now we're done with the GP track. 
which was built in 1984, by the way, cost roughly 40 million euros. So the first opening race was won by Ayrton Senna. I should have told you more, those facts are along the lap. And we're going back onto the Nordschleife. T13, named after the T13 grandstand here on the right. And as of 11th of September last year, 2021, this corner here is called Sabine Schmidt Curve or Sabine Schmidt Corner named after, of course, Sabine Schmitz. I believe she doesn't require any introduction, but in case this video will be watched by someone maybe 20, 30 years later, and you somehow don't know who Sabine Schmitz is, the greatest woman, as of now, to have ever lived on the Nürburgring, won the 24-hour race, the only woman to have won the 24 hours in 96, 97, and unfortunately also passed away last year and got the track, or the corner named after her. By now, we already entered Hatzenbach. And this is a very long section, it's, not, it's a series of corners. And Hatzenbach, Bach means um, uh, like a creek, like a water stream. And Hatz, it's kind of like hunt. So probably they used to hunt here back in the days. And that's pretty much it. We're still in Hatzenbach, still in Hatzenbach. You will see actually that's a lot of corners. A lot of sections are, um, are actually sections and not just corners. So here, still Hatzenbach, onto the curb in Hatzenbach and going in towards the tire wall, end of the tire wall, still in Hatzenbach. Aiming for the three kilometer sign and there we see already the Yokohama branded corner name Hochheichen, which translates literally to high oaks of the, because of the high oak trees here on the left. Very slippery in the white and definitely very slippery in the snow because we can see snowflakes literally laying on the track. It's crazy that the track is allowed to be open today, for which I'm very happy. We're now on Quiddebacher Höhe, the Quiddebach height, or not straight. So the height of Quiddebach, actually there are, there are, talking Dutch here, here ahead of us. And a lot of people confuse it with Flugplatz, but this is actually the height of Quiddebach and because it's the highest point of the village of Quiddebach next to us. Flugplatz is actually starting only shortly over there. We can see the Yokohama sign, so here we go. Flugplatz here, but a lot of people confuse it with Quiddebach because Flugplatz means air field and people think it's because the cars used to take off here before 2015 there was an actual jump that made the cars take off and they were thinking it was named after that but no it's actually named after an airfield that people used to take off their gliders with. Um, and here we have actually Cottonborn which used to be an actual official corner name up until someone forgot to use it anymore and here they had even actually Dunlop Bridge I believe to get from one side to another and unfortunately they didn't have it anymore for some reason. Now Schwedenkreuz uh, named after the actual cross which is standing here a concrete cross uh, or no stone cross they didn't have concrete back then in 1638 I think it was 1638 when Hans uh, Friedhelm Dad the mayor of Kelberg was slain by Swedish soldiers and then they put the cross and then um, yeah it's still over there. Aremberg after the village of Arem and also after the village of Aremberg which is not far here. Above us soon to be Yokohama bridge or actually post trasse or post broke the post bridge so used to probably street to carry mail from Nürburgring to Adenau and we're going down into Foxhole one of the most exciting sections of the track which has a yellow light. Now, Faxol named, initially they wanted to call it the Wimbach Loch, like the, the hole of Wimbach, af, named after uh, the village of Wimbach nearby. But when they were building the Nordschleife between 1925 to 1927, a fox got um, stuck in a drain pipe here and they paused the construction works here until fox could be rescued and they said like, oh, you know what, we're gonna call it. Uh, call it Foxhole. Now exit Foxhole here, we're gonna take it smoothly because there was a yellow light and we're entering Adenau Forest. Quite straightforward, literally straight. A lot of people go straight there. We can see the Marshall car there because it's a blind corner and people oversee it and they go straight. But the literal translation is Adenau Forest, uh, named after the forest of Adenau. It's quite the... Ah, <laughs> I think... Oh no. There is actually another Marshall car. Yeah, no, okay. I was thinking maybe. Oh, I think that was Stateside Supercars. 
Now, I was thinking maybe they're deliberately slowing people down to not go straight because it's extremely slippery. You should not be driving this track without winter tires today. Okay, I don't know, Forrest, how much we can say about that. It's very quiet out today, as you can see, because nobody expected the track to be open. Now, the tree of Jimmy Broadband, and ahead of us is Metzgersfeld, and it translates into field that was belonging to Metzger. So actually, here we have Metzgersfeld 1, and followed by Metzgersfeld 2. We're staying on the outside here because we have a bit more grip than on the inside in wet and cold and slippery days. So Metzgersfeld 2, unofficial name by the way, followed by, no actually this is James Left. Yeah, because, well, long story, maybe someone can explain it in the corners, I might even pin the comment, preceded by Colin Hart. Um, because if you crash here, calling for emergency is quite hard. Very bad joke, but uh, people say maybe because it's cold and hard, like cold and hard. Ahead of us is also Spiegel Curve, but, but back in the 50s, Colin Hart was called the corner of death because of it's very steep downhill and if you go straight, you go off the hill and yeah, you have a problem. Now, people say that this is Spiegel Curve because it's kind of a core, like a mirror, Spiegel, uh, left, right. But actually, some people say that Colin Hart was named Spiegel Curve back in the days because the drivers used to uh, hit their, uh, like, uh, hit off their uh, side mirrors on their cars because back then you did not have the barriers but hedges. Yeah, you could uh, hit it against a tree. Now, we just passed Miss Hit Miss, which is an unofficial name for a corner, uh, proceeding into Wehrseifen and Wehrseifen. Wehr means to defend, and Zeifen means, uh, what's the name, valley. So it's like a defense valley, uh, and also a valley that was separating the villages of Adenau and Breitscheid. And Breitscheid is the next corner down there. We'll see it in a bit, but speaking of uh, miss hit miss, because we missed it, I was talking about Colin Hart still. Um, it's a triple right-hander corner, and it's called miss hit miss because you miss the first curbstone, you take the apex of the second curbstone, and you proceed to the third one. Breitscheid, many of you on my channel know that the, here we have a second entrance and exit, therefore we have a speed limit to make sure you not crash into an ambulance like someone did. It's also the lowest section of the track, only 320 meters above sea level, uh, opposed to 627 meters above sea level for T13 or Sabine Schmidt's corner, the, the highest section of the track, so there's 307 meters of elevation change. And here followed by X Mühle. Um, X uh, is actually also water here, another creek, and Mühle, there used to be a windmill here, and the windmill owner back in 20s, who owned the windmill and the, and the land, didn't want to sell it to the government, to people who were construction in the Nürburgring, because actually they wanted to have a start, finish, and grandstands here. He didn't want to sell it, therefore they put it actually in Nürburgring. So that's the history. Lauda Lynx, where Nicky Lauda crashed in 1976, and almost lost his life. Um, yeah, as the history tells us. Followed by Bergwerk, one of the slippiest sections of the track in the wet, named after the, I think, was it gold and silver or iron and something, on iron and silver mines, uh, which were closed in the beginning of eight, uh, 1900s because there was not enough material one anymore. Very important corner for qualifying lap times because it's followed by a long straight, uh, almost two kilometer not straight, but a flat-out section, pretty much flat-out with any car. You're going first towards Kesselschen. Uh, also means something like uh, a creek, um, yeah, a small creek, so there was like a small creek running here. To going towards Klosetal, where is Kesselschen? It's still, we're still approaching Kesselschen. But we call already, like, oh, there's a taxi, you can see how we're only going 90 we're only going 90 kilometers per hour two days ago I was driving track day here and I was going 220 kilometers per hour through that corner so that's the speed differences in the wet opposed to the dry okay close at all closer means a convent or a monastery so in the 14th century there was a monastery here and even in the 18th century there was a like a monk living here and helping people everyone who would need help and ahead of us is Mutkurve, which is unofficial name for a corner which translates to the corner of courage over here. Because with a very fast car, with a very good aero or slow car, you can take it um, flat out. 
180, 190 kilometers per hour. Faster than that, you should definitely brake for that or lift, depending on the car again. Over to slow car, you can go fast because the, the track is going uphill here and uh, you your car, if you ha don't have like 200 horsepower, it will automatically be losing speed. Going towards Steierstrecke or steep section of the track, it will actually there's no one behind us so we can aim straight towards it. So in the past you could decide to go straight from here, straight there into Steierstrecke. We should definitely not do this, but um, it was used as a testing section because it has an incline of 27 degrees and uh, it would put a lot of stress on your transmission and engine components in the past but in the 60s when it was still allowed to go through there and cars would be getting more grip because of the tire technology cars would flip backwards people would die and they closed it up for public Caracciola Car carousel so carousel was built in 1932 so not immediately in 1927 when the track was built and Rudolf Caracciola realized that he can actually run through these concrete plates and before that there was actually even a drain running among those plates so it was kind of sketchy it was only used probably for water uh, to get rid of the standing water and him and his mechanics found out that the car is capable of running through there and he managed to win the like gain like 71 or 78 seconds during the race by using the inside of carousel that's why it was named after him then we're climbing towards Ho Acht the high, not eight, actually. It, acht also means eight in German, but actually acht comes from Achtung. Like, watch out, pay attention, because nearby here is the mountain of Hohe Acht, uh, the highest mountain in the region, 747 meters high, and uh, it's a bit away from here, so this is not the mountain itself. Uh, and a lot of people are confused thinking that it's the highest point of the track and it was until it was uh, in 1984 they built a GP track and with that also T13 section. Right now we're at Hedwig's Höhe, the height of Hedwig and Hedwig is the wife of the godfather of Nürburgring, Otto Kreutz, who would come here and watch his husband work. Proceeding into Wippemann and we have of course the Wippemann challenge and we have, I think it's Rebecca from Race Tracker standing there. Hello! <laughs> um, Vipa 1 comes from Vip Vap. The cars were doing like this basically. Um, and it was even significantly worse in the past uh, when they were going from left to right. So they changed the section, made it actually less crazy. Going into Eschbach, named after the, the creek of, uh, of Ash or also Ash Trees. Um, I hate this corner in the wet, so we take extra cautious through here. Followed to Brunchen, known among you as the YouTube corner. Brunnen means uh, fountain, and Brunchen, the small fountain, basically, because lots of irrigation streams were uh, uh, going through here to uh, supply water to the nearby village of Hesbroich, to whom the Brunchen car park actually belongs. So if you're gonna complain that Nürburgring needs to resurface the Brunchen car park, it's not theirs, it's, uh, it's of Hasbrook. Now, um, Ice Curve, or the corner of ice, because of the trees here and uh, um, the shadow that they cast over the track, it's the coldest section, it's the uh, section that dries up the latest when uh, you have, uh, when there's uh, rain or snow in this case, uh, and thereby it's as, not cold, but as slippery as ice. Followed into Flansgarden, a very exciting section where we have here the jump, so called Flansgarden 1, because in the past uh, the earls of Nurburg were cultivating tree, uh, not trees, well, also trees, but plants, so plant garden. And then going into Flansgarden 2, still we have here the corner, 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 then another corner, corner, corner. Here we have Flansgarden 2, followed by Flansgarden 3 up until 2013 when they renamed it so this is the Flans Garden 2 jump and the section ahead of us is Stefan Belov S the Belov uh, the, the S of Stefan Belov named after legendary Stefan Belov who in 1983 on I think 25th of May set of course the famous lap record of 6 minutes 11 and 05 in a qualifying of a thousand kilometer race and the, in, during the race he actually crashed here 
and that's why the 30 years later in 2013 they renamed the corner after him followed by Schwabenschwanz this section here swallow's tail because according to the, the builders of Nürburgring Nordschleife if you look at the section from the top it looks like a swallow's tail I could never understand that but sure bro cool ahead of us is mini carousel it's an unofficial official name not official enough because officially it's still Schwabenschwanz is it confusing enough for you? Well, there we have it. And then we go, really? Honestly, Polestar with 70 kilometers per hour with the slowest jump ever out of the mini carousel, you pull my seat belt? Yeah, I would definitely have crashed. Right, Galgenkopf or the gallows, because in the past, in the Middle Ages, they would help public executions here and hang people here from the gallows very interesting place to name the corner but then again in Silverstone you have maggots and beckets or something and why because they cultivated maggots to go fishing I don't know someone tell me in the, uh, in the comments and then coming on to the Döttinger Hö again of course um, yeah the the height of the the high point of Döttingen the village nearby here where in 1975, during the F1 practice, Emerson Fittipaldi ran out of fuel, and next here at uh, we have the ED gas station, and Retti, the owner of gas station, grabbed a jerry can, walked over here, like, here you have some fuel. He's like, thanks, mate, and proceeded on. So, <clears throat> small anecdote. Okay, that's pretty much it. I just found out that cruising with a Polestar in cold conditions takes roughly 9% of a battery over a combined circuit which is not too bad because when we send it through on Nordschleife alone it's gonna eat up of on a, on a normal day like what 30 something percent or more so it's actually quite good well that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope the GoPro recorded I hope the sound is okay that everything is okay I would love to do another lap in the snowy conditions but I need to go and edit and publish this video for you. So uh, leave a like and comment and a share. And um, yeah, let me know what you would like to see next. We have lots and lots of content coming up. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff coming up. Right, in any case, see you in tomorrow's video, obviously. Have a good day and uh, think of coming to the Nürburgring because as you can see, you can do a lap in the snow this weekend. And yes, because of the snow, they canceled RCN race and Unlassen, which is the motorcycle event scheduled to be held this Sunday. So they canceled both. So we have full weekend of DF now. So public session will be open as long as weather permits. As you can see, you can even drive in snow. But make sure to take your winter tires.